Hello to all and welcome to Life in My World. So in this episode, I want to start off with something that I have created for winter. And we just, not too long ago, got rid of some snow. Who knows when we're going to have some more. But I just wanted to show you this adorable little guy and show you what I used. So... Let's see, okay. get rid of my shadow here. But this is my book snowman. He found an old hat that doesn't fit the kids anymore. And I think if you make one, it really needs to be one with a little ball on the top. It just makes a statement. Um, the eyes were the last thing. And I'm thinking, what can I use to do eyes? Well, if you look very closely, they are pine cones that I actually got from <laughs> this little um, bag of like potpourri pine cones. I have like cinnamon sticks and stuff in it. And it had been sitting here because I was kind of um, decorating the table for a winter scene and thought, oh my gosh, I'm going to get glue dots and stick them on. And that's exactly what I did. Every now and then this big guy here, because of course they're not the same size, falls off, but we just stick them right back on. This worked out perfect. This is a Christmas ornament. Um, I was trying to think what's the perfect nose. I don't want to really put real food there and attract bugs and have it rot and possibly like get my books dirty from like it started to rot. And I remembered that we had these gold ornaments. So maybe you have some type of ornament or something at home that you can use. And I just, I didn't even use glue dots. I just uh, put it in between the books and the weight of these books is actually keeping it in place. Got a scarf. I wish I had one that kind of matched this hat. It would be cuter. Uh, but this works just fine. And I used all white books, of course. <laughs> um, other than I think I needed a certain size book right here. This one's actually um, a dark colored book too because this hat was so small but you can barely see it. So I just, ugh, I really like the way he came out. He's sitting on the vintage table that I had actually gotten this right after Christmas. Uh, reduced it like Home Depot or Lowe's. I don't remember which one. So I got him for like a $1.50 or something and he just cute. Don't, you know, he's some type of little gnome. This is actually um, from Walt Disney World. I think by now y'all probably know I'm a big Disney fan. And again, I've already told you what I put in there. Uh, this did have Christmas decorations on it and I just took them off. I had a pine cone owl. I'm trying to make this like a nature, natural, outside type of table because it just goes wonderfully with um, the glass painted window. And... This I actually did years ago, and I've just never changed it. Some of the flowers have came off, but I may do a, um, a vlog on how to at one point or include a segment on how to make this in one of these vlogs, but it's actually paper from an old book that was torn up that I made into rosebuds, and, but I'll go into that later. Another, another vlog, another day, people. And again, I'm sorry about the shadow. This is not a well-lit room, so I'm just trying to stay out here. And just some other, uh, my husband loves rabbits, so of course that's where the rabbits come in. And I just wanted this table to just be wintry in a way, just say outdoor winter. I'm not actually done. Just wanted to show you guys this guy. I love decorating with books. To keep, you know, if you like book idea decorations. Keep watching my vlogs because I will try in every episode to put one of my ideas. It may not be every episode, but it'll be at least every other one. In my cooking segment of today, I have some leftover lobster ravioli from a restaurant I had at lunch. And I'm going to saute some mushrooms before they go bad with some onions um, to go along on top of that and I always heat up my pan for about five minutes with just a little bit of olive oil 
after that the oil had to eat it up the olive oil put in the mushrooms and then I put in a touch of soy sauce and I've added a few red onions for extra flavor so I'm curious all you mushroom eaters what is your favorite recipe that you must have mushrooms in because I'm always looking for extra mushroom recipes Ah, oh, listen to that sizzle. Is it making you hungry? And voila, I've already heated up my lobster ravioli and topped it off with the mushroom and onions and it's bon appetit for me. So for our book segment today, I am at Barnes and Noble and I'm so excited. I had no idea these books existed. But do you guys recognize the name? Brad Meltzer. So he writes his, you know, adult um, books, and he has a TV show or did, I think on the History Channel. Uh, I can't remember what it was called, but I really like that book. But he has some kids' books out. So I'm um, Albert Einstein. I'm George Washington. And I'm Jane Goodall. So let's just take a quick little look. And <laughs> I thought they were going to show like a regular picture of him, but they are actually showing a cartoon, but that's pretty cute. But these books are $12.99. I just love it when I find things I didn't expect, things I didn't know were out there. One of the reasons that I like to do these these videos is to bring things to you guys that you may not know is out there. So if, if you're a Brad Meltzer fan, your kids like history. Now this one is a Barnes & Noble exclusive edition with a peek at the artist's sketch process. Hmm. Anyway, so if you have kids, oh, behind the scenes. That like especially if you're homeschooling like like if my son was younger I would probably definitely get these books for him so behind the scenes here's a peek at the sketch process 20 different approaches to George's hair do you recognize the final choice here well that's a fun little game for kids okay I am really oh this is a timeline this just looks like good quality information good quality book fun bright so brad Meltzer, you've totally surprised me i'm loving the looks of these books this is oops totally totally five pages you know did y'all get that like i'm rating the books like without even reading them and i'm giving it five pages instead of five stars y'all get that is that too corny just wanted to show you some of the adult fiction books that he writes what i like about that brad Meltzer is that he uses he pulls out real history so it's like historical fiction um actually i've not read this one um i have read the fifth assassin the first council uh oh the inner circle that was good um oh, book of lies book of fate oh one of my favorites from him and there is definitely more that they don't have here. They don't have a big hardback selection. I'm a hardback kind of gal. Anyway, so this is him. So the little cartoon version of him um, was actually spot on. Pretty cute. If, I, I totally recommend, recommend Brad Meltzer if you like, you know, Da Vinci Code. If you like the Dan Brown books, you're going to like Brad Meltzer. There's disappointment in my face, people. Do you see the disappointment? The disappointment is real. My library does not have anything else by Cat Winters. Well, I was trying to show y'all. Cat Winters. So I had seen somebody was reading this or had just read this and recommended it on booktube and I thought that sound pretty interesting so I went to my library and yay they had it I am now hooked on this author 
I know she has at least three more books, I think, and our public library has none of them. I'm speechless. So what was that book about, you ask? The Shadow in the Shadows of Blackbirds. Okay, that's ironic. Do you hear my parakeet like making herself known back there? That that was pretty good. I, I honestly I, I did not put her up to that, I swear. But anyway, it is a um, book based on the time of the Spanish flu. And this 16-year-old girl has to go live with her aunt. Her mother had passed away some time ago, but her father had been arrested. So for doing what he thought was right, um, but unfortunately with the war, he was considered a traitor and, and criminal because of that. So he was put in jail. She had to go live with her aunt. And... During that time, uh, it was it was a time of, and this really really happened in that time frame, where because of so much loss because of the war, uh, spiritual photographers these these frauds were a big thing back then. So this is going on during in the book, and she loses somebody close to her, a love in the war or does she there's a little bit confusion of if he died and when he died and yeah it, that's all i'm gonna say because i don't want to give it give it away people <laughs> but um definitely was intriguing and actually um this was a william c morris debut award finalist this author was so i'm going back again to our library doesn't have it. I am so disappointed. And what's bad is that our county library has like six libraries around the entire county. And the book is in none or any of her other books are in none of those libraries. And I'm like on a book buying freeze. Y'all, <laughs> y'all understand what I get, right? Y'all, I, I'm sure that many of you understand the book buying freeze that we must implement on ourselves every now and then. 